Southern California's first two-hour morning newscast. Carlos Amezcua, Barbara Beck, Mark Frisky with traffic and weather. KTLA Morning News. Well, if you're a fan of music trivia, Eric Spillman is going to take us on a tour of some of the local places that inspired rock's greatest hits. Now, you'd expect music legends to have been made in some of these places, but did you know that this building inspired Don Henley's song? Or that Marilyn Monroe first met Joe DiMaggio on a blind date at what is now the Rainbow, a hangout for hard rockers. I had a chance to hear some of these stories firsthand. They're found in Art Fine's new book, The L.A. Musical History Tour. So right here, the corner of La Cienega and Santa Monica used to be a place called the Phone Booth, which is a striptease club that Jim Morrison used to hang out at. And over there, up La Cienega was the Alta Cienega Hotel, where uh, he used to sleep off his binges. Tropicana Motor Hotel was right over here, a very famous rock and roll hangout. Once again, Jim Morrison used to live there. And uh, right over here is where the doors had their business office. Upstairs was they, where they did their business, and downstairs was a recording studio. It's interesting what happened here when Sonny Bono tried to get in here in 1965. He was always kind of on the fringe of the music industry. And then by 1965, he had his own hit song with his wife Cher. They had, Sonny and Cher had I Got You, Babe, and it was a top 10 hit, and he'd finally made it. So he came in here kind of triumphantly to walk into Martoni's, the place where he used to come as a, as a promotion man. And he went to the door, and they wouldn't let him in because he was wearing, a, I think, a fur vest and striped bell bottoms, and he had a Prince Valiant haircut. And uh, they refused him entrance. They just didn't uh, match up with their dress code. The uh, centerfold newsstand here uh, on, on Fairfax uh, was where Slash from Guns N' Roses worked in 1966. Um, he was just another clerk, just like they have there now, but uh, I guess he did too much of the band business on company time. The owners offered to put him in his own phone line if he wanted to do so much band business, but I don't think they were serious, and they just let him go. Ben Frank's patrons were all long-haired musicians in the mid-60s, and that was pretty unusual. So when uh, Columbia Pictures was auditioning people for the Monkees, the ads they ran in the paper said, we want Ben Frank's types. Uh, one of the people auditioning was Stephen Stills, who didn't make it as a monkey. Not just Evan Stone. There's no telling what may inspire the next big hit or musical legend, because even the city of Los Angeles has become what songs are made of. Eric Spillman, KTLA Morning News. A culture that inspires musicians. Here. Yeah, it inspired Eric, didn't it? <laughs> it sure did. And you can visit many of these musical landmarks this Saturday and Sunday on the Rock, rock and Roll Bus Tour, which will benefit the T.J. Martell Foundation, and tickets are available through Ticketmaster. We'll be back. Hello, I'm Kim DeVore. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ross Becker. Before we leave you tonight, a little bit of uh, rock and roll. From heavy metal watering holes to legendary radio stations, there is one man who knows just where to go to find a piece of rock and roll history. News 13's Rich Proctor takes a walk with the guy who knows where all these hidden treasures are. Meet Mr. Rock and Roll himself. Uh, hi, I'm Art Fine, and uh, welcome to my rock and roll tour of Hollywood. 
hey, why shouldn't Art do the definitive rock tour of L.A.? He wrote the book on the subject, which led to this map, and this weekend he'll be heading up the Tanqueray-sponsored tour. It's going to take place Saturday and Sunday, starting out at Tower Records. We're going to drive around the rock and roll historical sites of Los Angeles. Uh, it's 10 bucks a ticket, and the money goes to the T.J. Martell Charity Foundation. It's a record industry-associated uh, leukemia foundation. Sounds like a real good cause, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Being the affable rock on tour that he is, Art gave me a personal pedestrian preview of this weekend's drawing. Come on. Well, the rainbow right here is uh, something uh, sort of unique to LA. It's a traditional heavy metal place. In other words, for 15 years, it's been a watering hole for all the hard rockers. And the whole go-go craze started because of this place. And that was an accident. I don't know if you know that story, but uh, Johnny Rivers was a house band and he'd play on stage and they had a little cage set up over on the side for the girl to play records, but she liked the music while he was playing, so she started dancing, and people thought that was girls in cages. <laughs> what a great idea. It caught on. And finally, tell me about this place. Well, it's a jack-in-the-box now, but it used to be Scrivener's Drive-In in the 50s. Uh, disc jockey Art Laveau held forth here on a radio station after after school at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Everybody came by here. Ricky Nelson, Jackie Wilson, I mean, uh, Fats Domino, you name it. He interviewed everybody at this place. So the next time you have a beef fajita sandwich here, remember you are treading on sacred rock and roll territory. From Hollywood, the heart and soul of rock and roll, this is Rich Rockter, News 13. Rockter Proctor. <laughs>uh, it's in here somewhere. a and Records, Academy of Nude Wrestling. Oh, yeah, Al's Bar. Uh, hi, I'm not usually a travel reporter, but the L.A. Musical History Tour takes you all around Los Angeles and shows you where rock and roll happened. This guy ought to know about it. He's Arch Fine. And this guy, Mark Kreisel, owns Al's. Al's Bar is one of the more than 200 entries in Fine's book, noting the great rock and roll heritage around Los Angeles. A lot of rock bands have played at places like these. Bands like... Black Flag, Fear, uh, Big Jake McNeely. We get bands here who uh, want to, before they go on tour, they want to play a small gig. Uh, and we've got uh, big guys coming in to uh, play regular gigs. You know, the place looks much better now that you redecorated. Thank you very much. Some rock and roll spots around L.A. may be somewhat obscure, except to patrons. For instance, the Anti Club is in Fine's book as is Lucy's El Adobe. It's a restaurant and was a hangout for performers like Jackson Brown and Linda Ronstadt. There are some more obvious rock and roll historical sites in the book, such as the Stackle Platters Capitol Records building. Dead Man's Curve from the old Jan and Dean hit was based on a stretch of Sunset Boulevard. Jeff Bridges and James Woods managed to survive it in Against All Odds. Sunset Boulevard associated with rock and roll history in Los Angeles. A lot of clubs along here and also hotels that sometimes occasionally became parts of album covers and oddly enough, just, just by luck, there's a couple of guys here associated with that. You know Art Fine already and of course Randy California of the group Spirit who actually at one point posed here. Why did the band pose here? Well, there was a big six right there. And what did six have to do with anything? Uh, the ecological number six has to do with the three elements of the earth and the four truths of the seven parts of the cosmos. I knew that. The sixth is gone and the telephone replaced by a soda machine. But Spirit is still together. Well, it was one of the uh, big groups of the late 60s. I mean, people think it was just the Doors here, but it was the Doors, really the Doors, Spirit, and Steppenwolf were the three big comers out of L.A. The Doors may be the best-known L.A. band. They're in the book, of course. As for the City of Angels itself... It's the rock and roll capital of America, if not the world. This is it. This is where it's happening. John Corcoran, Channel 9 News. Cool. Author Art Fine will be leading a bus tour of some of rock and roll's uh, holy sites this weekend. Proceeds from that tour go to charity.
rock and roll tour, music expert Art Fine is joined by one half of Loggins and Messina. On your left when we turn the corner at the Troubadour, which is now a primarily a hard rock club, but it was a folk place in the 60s. Uh, Jim, did Foco play here? Foco played here. Uh... Loggins Messina played Loggins here. Messina and Poco played. Linda Ronstadt. Um, How many here have this album? Tree Lopez live at PJ's. Okay, show of hands. Everybody's got it. Great. 100% of the people have this album. It was done right here at PJ's. Now kind of chopped up into a bunch of little places. I'm Cindy Hom for E! Entertainment News.